The wide world of gaming is a weird one, and it keeps getting weirder every month. And because of this, every month we at Game Ranks put together a list of the weirdest stuff that happened throughout the month. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the weird gaming stories of February 2023. At number 10, a World of Warcraft player hit the max level before starting the game in a 200-day grind. In fact, this guy claims to be the first level 70 in the Exiles Reach start area and the process used was essentially pet battles now people use pet battles to grind all the time in world of warcraft by using several different characters on his account essentially parking them at five different npc trainers to continually do these pet battles now all of the pet battles missions whatever you do on an account because rewards that you get from a battle are account wide so you got five characters if you do a battle with each of them each of those battles counts towards your account it sounds complex but it's actually really not still he claims to be the first to have done it so that's weird at number nine a guy is photo scanning areas and putting them into unreal engine and it's insane now i know this is not something that none of us thought was possible we've seen a lot of photo scans in fact if you use unreal engine and start messing around with assets unreal actually bought that company called quixel that does all the photo scans and just integrated it all into its libraries for free but it's particularly crazy that a guy can just go somewhere and do this I mean, this just looks like footage until you really start looking into the nitty gritty of it. This is why the LED screens and the virtual production are absolutely the future of filmmaking. Not only are video games going to start being able to even have the most realistic, even mundane places, possibly setting more games in real world locations that are photo scanned. But now a lot of movies are probably going to be filmed in front of LED things. Just in places like this, you have total control over the light and they just don't have that in real life it's amazing what's weird is just how easy it's becoming for everyone to do at number eight a glitch from the witcher that apparently people have known about before became popularized when a post on reddit basically revealed that they had been driven nuts by a persistent hammer that accompanies Geralt of Rivia forever once the glitch happens that's the glitch there's just a hammer there and this post with the gentleman trying to find some kind of a fix for it got pretty big because a lot of people were making a lot of jokes about there being a hammer between Geralt of Rivia's legs insert giggity clip but if you go back you can actually find posts about the same glitch it's just not something that happens to a lot of people but it happens in basically every version of the witcher it's a weird glitch and it's also pretty funny because you just basically have to accept there's a hammer there like if you read previous troubleshootings of this glitch people start new games reload saves strip Geralt totally naked the hammer's just there enjoy the hammer at number seven, a bunch of photos from a wrestling match that Nintendo had with a bunch of its mascot characters. The photos surfaced and, and basically showed us just how weird Nintendo marketing can get. Like, let's just go ahead and say this. If you're in a big old mascot costume, you're not wrestling well. That's not happening. On top of that, they actually gathered a big crowd who's actually watching the wrestling match from stands that they set up outside of apparently a bunch of people's houses. Now, this is something that there has to be footage of somewhere and there are people that are searching for that footage as we speak but these photos are in my opinion pretty funny what is happening at number six, hey, you know that day before game that everybody's pretty convinced isn't real at this point? Remember how they said a trademark dispute was holding back their game and release of footage and release of blah, 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 and blah, 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 all that stuff? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to bother coming up with words. They said basically what's happened here is that a calendar app has the trademark to the name the day before and that they have exercised this trademark to take down videos. Somebody tracked down the calendar app in question because they haven't said the name although obviously you have to assume it's the day before and a company called the day before Inc apparently owns that trademark in South Korea which is where fantastic the game's developers are from so I just have no idea what's
what's going on with this game. A lot of people think it's not a real game. A lot of people think that this is kind of the equivalent of saying the dog ate my homework, but there's actually a company called The Day Before in South Korea that owns a calendar app and a trademark for the name of it. So the whole thing is just beyond bizarre. I don't know what is real and what is fake regarding this game. I don't know if we're ever going to see this game. I would like it. Maybe they should move out of the country in that way that South Korea doesn't matter. Like, does the day before incorporated in South Korea have the trademark in the United States? It's extremely, extremely bizarre. Moving on to number five, AMD, the chip manufacturer, who also manufactures, among other things, PCs and graphics cards, said on an earnings call that they have been undershipping the sell-through or consumption of the last two quarters. We undershipped in Q3, we undershipped in Q4. We will undership to a lesser extent in Q1. Now, what undershipping means is they are not shipping enough supply to balance out demand. Why? Because during that chip shortage, oh my God, God, the prices went up. And what do companies, large lifeless entities that are made literally to create profits for their shareholders, what does that love more than anything? Prices that are high while costs remain low. That means the margin of profit is higher than it would be otherwise. Now, what this means is we are not in a chip shortage anymore, but they are artificially creating chip shortage prices for us to consume at. Now, somebody might say, well, they took a beating during the chip shortage, wouldn't they need to make up for it? No. You want to know why? Because the cost to make things during the chip shortage was not increased. The manpower necessary was simply decreased. So that price increase we all saw during the chip shortage actually made the profit margin higher. Most of these chip companies saw nice increases in profits during the course of it. And now AMD is like, oh, we want to keep that rolling. You know, we don't want to ship too many chips. Let's keep, let's keep this nice big profit thing rolling. Intel didn't do so good during the chip shortages, but uh, AMD's got no reason to do whatever the hell Intel is scrambling to do. So uh, I guess we all get to enjoy these high prices for a while longer. Maybe now that we're a few quarters into them saying publicly what they're doing, that's gonna change, but I don't know. Enjoy the high prices. And number four, um, the Hogwarts mods have come in. You can find everything from people shooting each other with handguns to zapping each other with asparagus. I don't know if there's anything else to say here. Honestly, it's beautiful. It's amazing to see somebody with a Wiimote in the wizarding world, allegedly over a hundred years ago. That's funny. Not just any Wiimote either. The limited edition Luigi Wiimote. Thank you very much. Honestly, probably the funniest one for me is the guns. I know it's funny to see people pointing asparagus at each other, but it's funnier to me to see guns in Hogwarts. If I'm completely honest, it looks absolutely ridiculous to see people in wizard robes shooting guns at each other. <laughs> Even if the guns are shooting silly magical balls of whatever magic is at each other, it's still funny. Like, look, like, and the way that people use wands in the game too, it's really like overemphasized and dramatic. So, I mean, when you see it with a gun, it's, it's hilarious. At number three, uh, the hacker who got into Riot Games is selling the League of Legends source code for less than a million dollars on the black market, $700,000. Uh, but what's really funny is that it includes the anti-cheat software. Like, you buy the source code to League of Legends, and it includes the anti-cheat. Now, of course, people who want to steal the League of Legends source code are going to want the anti-cheat. That's a great thing to include it in a, in a black market transaction there, because people who want to hack the anti-cheat will now be able to. It'll only cost him $700,000. Honestly, I'm sure that there's people who have made more money than that selling cheats, so I'm not shocked. I'm really actually not shocked. At number two, a uh, judge dismissed the lawsuit against Nintendo that was filed because their Joy-Cons drift, which, you know, that's real. That's a serious problem with the Joy-Cons, and somebody decided to sue over it. Got thrown out because the Nintendo end-user license agreement 
quote unquote, disallows lawsuits. So, you know, if any consumer product out there is defective or even possibly dangerous, but the licensing agreement that you agree to by using it says that you can't sue them, guess that's it. Uh, That's a bad precedent. I'm just going to say that right off. I'm sorry. Absolutely not. No, that is a terrible precedent. If you just sneak into your little licensing agreement, no lawsuits. I don't care if you lose a hand. No lawsuits. No, no. That needs to be challenged. I hope they're challenging that. That's bizarre. Like it's an absolute mechanical fault. And there's technology that Nintendo could be implementing that would stop it too. They just don't. They keep putting out the faulty Joy-Cons. That's what lawsuits are supposed to be able to hold them accountable for. But I guess like no takesies backsies is is like legally a valid defense against that. And finally, at number one, people who are using keyboard and mouse on console to play Rainbow Six Siege are about to get some problems from Ubisoft, who does not like that. Ubisoft is now regarding the usage of keyboard and mouse on console as spoofing, which that's stupid. I'm sorry. Keyboard and mouse is the appropriate way to play first person shooters, and there should be official support for that in consoles in every first person shooting game as far as I'm concerned. Ubisoft disagrees, however. Uh, They regard it as spoofing, which is cheating, and their anti-cheat software isn't going to ban people for it, so that's good. But uh, they are going to start adding input lag to the keyboard and mouse players, which is stupid. To be frank, this should be a way that is literally officially supported on consoles. Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo should all be selling keyboards and mouses officially for their consoles because they all have first-person shooters on them and you should be able to use them with first-person shooters because it's the right way to play them. This is stupid. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week best way to see them first is of course a subscription so click subscribe don't forget to enable all notifications and as always we thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon the hero and we'll see you next time right here on game ranks